Oh, sweet. A new mod came out. I gotta download that. Oh, hey everyone, this is Stevio here. We got to get to work. We can't be playing Farm Sim. Let's get to it. Alright, so today, first, we need to go feed our, our livestock. So our feedlot cattle are getting down, so we need to go feed them quickly. We will take a shortcut right here, get down. So there's a few chores to get done before we start our haying. So we got to do a lot of haying today. We got a few chores to do first. So let's get over. So we're putting the Magnum on the feed wagon here. Feed these cattle quickly. We got still nine tons, Miss Keenan. So feedlot cattle are doing good, so oops, there we go. So it's the first day of early summer. It's going to get a 70 degrees, a nice 70 degrees today, which is perfect weather in my book. Feedlot cattle are being noisy. That's good though, this means they're healthy. So first things first, I want to go check on some of our crops. So I believe our oats are doing good. So we're going to get back over here and we're going to look at the oats we have here. Or planting. I think they may be able to swap them. So looks like they're right before seeding, so we will try to get at that. We'll go back, get our swathers graced up, start doing that. So we got the New Holland hay bine here. We'll get going with the hay bine. Not sure. So we'll get the hay bine started. So I thought I could swap the oats, but apparently I was wrong on that. So. Let's first lap around. We'll just keep it straight going. A little bumpy over here on the corner.
going around here. You can see our corn is coming up nicely. We need to get some nitrogen in it though, you can see. It's a little lacking. Other than that, it's doing good. One of these days we'll get some nitrogen down on it. Get a little shot. Got this New Holland 116 Haybine here. Definitely have some memories doing this. Running a uh, variable arm Haybine. So, definitely not one of my favorite jobs. Did this plenty of time, so. Good looking haybine though. Works pretty good. Hoping this isn't the one that gets uh, silver in color after just a few quickly, but maybe. Definitely going to take some time to get this field done. So we have a few fields we need to swath here. And we'll keep the swather straight on with the tractor for this first round because of the tree claim on the outskirts. Looks like we're missing a gap over here. jump into our TW10 Ford. So you're probably saying, Stevio, why the heck didn't you put that on the haybine? Uh, because of the hitch. So basically the hitch on this doesn't work with the haybine. It takes a special tractor it seems. So it really works good on the 4010. So this tractor is extremely overpowered for this little sickle swather here, but I kind of like the old school feel of it. So I was going to try to put this on one of the old tractors, but the problem is I don't have many old tractors that have a three point hitch. So this little sickle swather wouldn't really work good for them. So we got our second turbo tractor here. Little 1206. So we're gonna have two of these little sickle swathers going. So this is only about what three foot wide sickle swather, so it'd be nice if the modder made like a the longer. I've seen a little some trailer sickle swathers out there. A lot of people still use them today. The sickle swathers are definitely used in the olden days. So now we got two tractors over here sickle swathing. So definitely going to take a while with these tractors. So I figured we better have two going. Good looking tractors. Hope I'm running in the field like this. Definitely going to have a good crop of hay over here. Got the 1206 TW10 going and the 4010 going. A whole bunch of old school tractors. So, got a pretty good uh, amount of hay. Got one more field to swap to. I haven't decided. I'm thinking of contemplating chiseling up that field too. But we will see. Got 
to enjoy watching both of these old tractors run in the field. You get a little bird's eye view of the sickle bars in action. It's definitely not a very wide cut. This field is definitely long and skinny and a little bit odd shape. So I made up my mind. I figured it's probably smart just to get this crop off right before we chisel it. So I think I'm going to chisel it just so uh, course plate can read this field properly. Because it does have some highline poles in it. We're gonna swath this field. Won't take long with this swather. Got our self-propelled swather going here. Our, this is German made. Definitely not American. Good old school swather. Wish there was more some old school swathing mods out there, but this one will do. So this is basically our third grass field. Not a giant field, but definitely can't let this go to waste. Pretty good fields. Right now I'm getting the outs outside boundary of this field done. And then I will Set it up with the hired help. Once we get this first pass done, we will hand it over. I've been dreaming so much lately. It's like our hay bind's doing good now. It's the only thing that saves me. Hey, I don't know if I told you. Definitely getting dirty for only four rounds around this little hayfield. This field here is our largest hayfield. Takes these sickle bars about four to five passes for just one hay bind going through. real life when you have your hay spread out like this does it would actually dry quicker though I don't know I know the the New Hollands they have uh, conditioners hay conditioners which help break up the hay which help it dry quicker so I don't know which one would be quicker A little inside the TW10 in here. Hey, now look into my eyes. You can use them as a mirror. You're my ticket to paradise. Hey, now look into my eyes. You can use them as a mirror. This TW10 is definitely too big for this sickle bar. Jump 
back into our self-propelled here. So we are swapping here in our German, can't pronounce the name, self-propelled swather. So this is a field I plan on chiseling up. So primarily I want to chisel it up so the highline foals, I don't get caught up on them when I'm bailing or swathing, tedding or wind rolling. So I'm just going to put them as islands. So I believe it should work if I chisel it up and replant it. But I figured I'd just as well get the crops off of it before I do that. So, got a good growth of grass in it right now. I would, it would be nice if I had uh, alfalfa in this map. Good old alfalfa, but grass is alright. So in FS17, this map actually had alfalfa. So, haven't seen a lot of good alfalfa textures out there so we're going to see but we should be going around so I like how the map author put all like the water planes in this map so you see in front of us so they're definitely in the low areas got water. That's a river running through. So this map is actually slightly different than that one that came out in 17. It's, it's extended, so it's basically a full 2x map. So I believe the one, the first one that came out in 17, this one actually didn't come out in 17 public anyways, so uh, was only a 1x map. Do you like doing in cab swathing with this swather? Nice tiny cab, so it might be bumping my elbows on the windows, but definitely easy to do. Doesn't hurt the neck. Do you do any? Breakaway arm swathing, you definitely get some neck pain in you. So, this will be the first time that we swath with seasons, so I'm gonna have to get used to seasons. So, seasons basically, you have to wait until your grass dries. You also have to, uh, if you want it to dry quicker, you got to tet it just like in real life. So that's pretty cool. Definitely some realism. Uh, it definitely dries like to a very, looks like dry hay, that's for sure. So the color of it. Definitely did a lot of haying in my day. When I was younger, my parents owned a small s square baling business, so basically all summer long, that's all I do. So we do have a small square baler. Don't know if I'm gonna end up round baling at all. Might consider it. So we actually have two small square balers. Okay, we might just all do small squares. You definitely have a if you have a big cattle operations that would be a lot of work running all small square. 
So nowadays, mostly small square bales are used for hobby farms. Uh, they're also used for s smaller livestock, like sheep, goats, uh, a lot of cow-calf operations or dairy operations use it to help feed their calves. Uh, it's just for when you need smaller portions. Round bales really don't suffice. I know my dad had a hobby farm. He just sold it. Well, he would still do round bales. He would just tip them over and fork in the hay. Their daily portions. When he was getting older in age, he couldn't lift the 70 pound all the way to 90 pound alfalfa bales up. It's day one of early summer here, so great for uh, swapping. So we actually have a few days. So we do have rain on the schedule. Hopefully this misses us. So tomorrow. So we might have to tread over hay and uh, make sure we bail it right away. So definitely got to watch the rain. Because the rain will either deplete your yield of your hay or we re moisten the hay to too high a moisture for baling. So when you're baling hay, especially unless you're going to wrap the bales or something like that, you got to get it at a pretty low, low moisture. So basically, if you put your grab a handful of hay it should crack to the point it could still feel wet to a certain point but you should be able to wring it and crack it if you can do that then it's dry enough stuff like alfalfa and stuff you got to worry about uh, leaf loss so you you need a bale when there's a dew but grass, it doesn't really matter. You can't really lose the leaves, so you can bale it. Don't want to bale it super dry, because otherwise it's going to not make a, a good bale. But sometimes you don't have that option. This is why I like self-propelled swathers. You can definitely get a lot done. It just doesn't take you long to turn around. It's so efficient, everything's in front of you. So really cut down on your labor expense for the hay, but I guess it costs more for the expense of buying the swather. Anybody that's cut a lot of hay, I don't know anybody that likes a pull type side swather, but couldn't even imagine running a a new Holland uh, bi-directional tractor with a front swather and happen to pull another swather behind that would definitely be uh, a lot of stuff to look after so most of the time fields I swathed were very hilly 
Had a lot of gopher holes, all that stuff, where you really had to pay attention to your sickle bar. Otherwise, you'll dig it into the dirt. So you're constantly adjusting it, watching it, making sure. There's always the occasional T-post out there that'll just destroy your swather. So you got to watch out for that stuff. Uh, the same thing when farmers are uh, combining soybeans and everything. Definitely have to be on the lookout. You don't want a T-post going for your combine. So here we are swathing around these uh, highline poles here. Oops. There we go. It turned back soon enough. That's a skidding my back wheels. I do you like the look of the elevator leg in the background here? See it off in the distance? It's pretty cool. Really like this map. Really wish I was good enough to make this map fully season ready, but it is uh, semi season ready, I should say. Go. This is the last pass for here. So we're pulling this uh, swather back here. So we just got done with all the swathing. So we now have to let the hay dry. So once that's dry and ready we have a lot of bailing to do so thanks for watching and i will see you later here on autumn oaks